Hi, I'm Jack and welcome back because I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on season one of What If. But before we get started, don't forget this is a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the whole series yet, do so right now. And then when you finish, come back to this video. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen. So don't forget to do that while you're at it. And with that said, let's get started. Season one is about The Watcher, voiced by Jeffrey Wright, and it is an episodic series exploring all these different universes throughout the multiverse and explores a potential, what if this played out differently? First things first, to kick off the positives, I really liked the animation style of, this episode, of the show. It looks great. I haven't seen animation quite like this before that I know of, and so I thought it looked really unique and it looks nice and distinct amongst other animated properties like Invincible and stuff. So I thought it looks great, especially in episodes like episode four, episode eight, episode nine, and episode three. It, I loved the animation throughout the series and it looked really good to me. There were like a few times where it looked a little bit weird, but it worked for the most part for me. The second thing I really liked is... I loved the character of Strange Supreme. He is easily one of my favorites on this whole show. I loved Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. So seeing him play a different version of the character was really great. And I thought they pulled it off very well. And he fits the voice really well, especially as they go from live action to voice acting. So that I really like. And I loved how we got to hear Chadwick Boseman voice T'Challa one more time. That was really sad to see, and I thought it was very bittersweet to seeing Chadwick Boseman voice T'Challa, but an alternate version of the character, like, one more time. Because his death is still, it's still really tragic. And so hearing him pl play the character again was just really heartfelt. So I really liked that. And what they did with him on the show I thought was terrific. And so I also like characters like The Watcher. I thought I liked what we got from him. Love Strange Supreme. I love T'Challa, Star-Lord. And I really liked how each episode, for the most part, has a very distinct what-if scenario. Like episode three, for example, was a murder mystery, which I never thought about a murder mystery in the MCU. So seeing a what if episode do that, I thought was really great. So they took the events of Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2 and Thor, and they decided to tie all that together into an episode where Nick Fury is trying to find out who's killing off the Avengers one by one. And that I really, really enjoyed because it felt very distinct. It felt unique. It felt new. And I thought it was done well. And so each of these episodes had really great alternate scenarios that really push the idea of the show being called what if especially with episode two because i loved how t'challa being star lord created a very different universe than the one we know of and even like episode four and episode five and episode six and all that they did a good job at trying to showcase that most of these episodes feel like different realities from the main mcu timeline and that I thought they did fine with what they had to do with. And so that I enjoyed. Next thing I want to bring up is that out of all nine episodes, my all-time favorite episode of the show is the Strange Supreme episode. I was really looking forward to this one before the show premiered. And so I was really wondering what they were going to do to make this different than the Doctor Strange we already know. So... And I loved it. I remembered watching it. I was in awe of how mature and how different this felt. And how it really fits this character in a what-if scenario. Where what if he lost Christine Palmer, but he could not change it no matter how hard he tried. And it just it tackles morality and losing yourself. And I loved it a lot. And what we could we do for love. And it was such a heartbreaking episode as well. It was just so well done. And it was just phenomenal it's easily one of my favorite pieces of mcu disney plus we've ever had to this day and i loved it a lot and the next thing i want to say is it redeems ultron because age of ultron is entertaining but i feel like ultron was very underwhelming because i love the villain of ultron and seeing him kind of just be reduced to just making jokes 
He's not very terrifying, and I just couldn't feel any sense of urgency from Ultron, even though I should be. And that was a bummer, but with this show, they redeemed him. They made him a thousand times more menacing than in Age of Ultron, and they made him a force to be reckoned with, and easily one of the most powerful threats the MCU has ever showcased on that show. And I loved the voice actor for him, Ross Marquand, if I pronounce that correctly. He vo he played Red Skull in Infinity War and Endgame. And I really liked him as Ultron in the show. And especially seeing how this Ultron, this fits the bill of what Ultron is, is, what he's programmed to do, and what he continues to do. And I love what they did with him. He's such a great villain. And this is, it just redeemed one of my most underwhelmed villains of the MC. Then I also really enjoyed the Guardians of the Multiverse, even though that doesn't happen until the finale. I really liked seeing the Super Soldier Peggy with Star-Lord T'Challa and Strange Supreme and Party Thor and Gamora and just Killmonger. And just, I really enjoyed seeing the Guardians of the Multiverse because even though it was only for an episode, I thought... It was cool seeing them fight side by side and take down Ultron from destroying more universes and all that. That I thought was really cool. And I wish we got more of it, but it also is called What If. That's a very episodic series. So it didn't particularly bother me very much, but I enjoyed what we got from them. And I'm curious to see what exactly happens next in season two. Like, Will they decide to go forward with that more or is that it for season one? So... There's that. Episodes that I really enjoyed this season as a whole were episodes two. I really enjoyed episode three, episode four. I liked episode five. I really liked Spider-Man that episode. And I really liked this zombie apocalypse-like scenario, which I really enjoyed. I liked episode six. They managed to keep Killmonger's character intact and still fit who he is, aside from what we saw from him in the Black Panther movie. And episode eight, which I really liked, they made Ultron a threat, and I just loved the animation episode and seeing Ultron fight the Watcher, and episode nine. Episode one, I'll get to that later. And then episode seven, I thought was fine, but not anything crazy. So, yeah. However, then I got to move on to the negatives, and the first thing that comes to mind is I thought... They kicked off the show with the wrong episode because I thought episode one was my least favorite of the show because it just didn't feel very different. It just felt similar and it felt like a short rehash of Captain America, the first Avenger, because you had like Peggy Carter. She becomes a super soldier. And so um, Steve Rogers, voiced by Josh Keaton, by the way, be gets like this Iron, uh, Iron Man like armor. But outside of that, everything else plays out the exact same as First Avenger. Like, she saves the Howling Commandos, and she lost, she thought she lost Steve, and she ends up going, like, through a portal, and she ends up being brought into modern, modern timeline. It just didn't feel very different, and it felt rushed, and it felt like they were just trying to recreate the First Avenger step by step by step. And it just didn't feel very interesting and it just didn't feel unique. And I felt like they kind of started off with the wrong episode because I thought every other episode past this one did the what if concept a lot better. So they didn't really kick off with the right episode there. And I wish they did a better job with that. The second thing is I wish they released the show all together because I sadly didn't find enough hype factor to be wanting to tune in week to week because sure there are some episodes that I really enjoyed but it just wasn't talked about as much as like WandaVision or Loki or the Falcon the Winter Soldier and so I wish what if they just dropped it all together just like they did with Star Wars Visions and I think the fact that they released it week to week and it didn't get a lot of talk it didn't get into the center of conversations was disappointing because it's a new Marvel Disney Plus show, and this feels very, it's supposed to be very different and very unique. And it's also an animated show as well, which I really like, by the way. But it didn't quite hook me very much as the other three shows have. And so that was a bit of a letdown. The third thing I have to bring up is the fact that 
they didn't explore this multiverse concept all that much, especially coming off of Loki, which had that jaw-dropping cliffhanger. And I was really hoping that What If was going to really focus on the multiverse and what makes it different and all these different timelines and spend more time on them. But we didn't quite go in depth with the multiverse and they didn't really push the boundaries for all the stuff they could have done with it besides like one or two episodes and so that was a bummer because again they had such a great idea with the show and whenever they do it right it's done really well but m most of the time it just didn't quite have that layer to it that makes it more complex and compelling and i wish we got more of that and the fourth thing is is I felt like with in episode nine, you had Gamora and I felt like they she felt like underutilized and also just thrown in there because originally there was supposed to be an episode with Gamora, but that was cut. And so the fact that in the finale, you already have a scene with her and she's there, it just feels out of place because like you knew T'Challa Star-Lord, you knew the Peggy Carter, you knew Party Thor and Strange Supreme and Killmonger and them, but you didn't really know this Gamora before the finale. So she felt very th out of place in that episode. And I get why they had to push it back, but it really kind of dampens the finale a little bit because she didn't really feel like she needed to be there all that much. And then the final thing I'm going to mention is they focused a lot on humor and the times humor is very hit or miss. And Party Thor, I thought it worked. It worked for what the episode is, but the humor kind of felt thrown in there from time to times and it didn't always get me laughing. And I feel like they need to kind of tone that back a little bit because I thought what if excels when it comes to character studies or darker episodes like the strange supreme one and especially how they handled killmonger in the what if he saved tony stark episode and i wish they focused more on that because with humor it didn't feel like they were doing it properly and it just kind of feels very hit or miss at times i also felt like the pacing was very rushed especially for each of the episodes for the most part because they have great ideas but all the episodes are like 30 minutes long and it makes the episodes come off as rushed they kept trying to go from point a to point b to point c and they didn't have enough time to flesh out this scenario so that was a problem all in all, What If Season 1 was entertaining. It was decent for what it was, but it was a bit of a letdown because it didn't quite explore the potential of what a story like What If and the multiverse could tell. And in the end, I think with the episodic format, it should have been released altogether, and therefore, I'm going to give Season 1 a B-. And I recommend this show for fans only. Not quite reached my expectations, but it was entertaining. It had some really great characters and some terrific episodes. And I wish we got more of that. And I wish that it gave more excitement to have me tune in week to week. And overall, it had some good moments, but it didn't quite capitalize on its potential. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with season two. I'm curious to see what episodes will they do and how many will there be and what kind of stories will they do what ifs for? So that I'm really curious to see. With that said, those are my thoughts on season one of What If. What did you think about What If? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more. Space. Reality. It's more than a linear path. It's a prism of endless possibility. Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all.